This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Hello, this is the Phyllis Chesla moment brought to you by the Glazov gang. Now, Israel has long been accused of being an apartheid nation state and responsible for ethnic cleansing. This is pure hogwash. This is a bold and brazen big lie. The largest practitioner of both gender and religious apartheid in the world is Islam. And it is now in a very expansionist jihadic military mode. Now, religious apartheid exists when Muslim countries don't allow churches to be built, when churches are destroyed or converted into mosques, and above all, as we see today, where Christians are being murdered in the name of Islam. Of course, Muslims have forcibly converted and persecuted and massacred Hindus and the wrong kind of Muslim, ex-Muslims, Baha'is, Erostrians, and Buddhists. Jews, my people, we are pariahs, monkeys, evildoers. And this is the only reason that Israel, the Jewish state, has been under attack for more than 100 years in the Jewish Holy Land. And by the way, Jews in Muslim countries in Central Asia or North Africa and in the Middle East have always been persecuted and murdered by Muslims, mobs and leaders. Israel allows um, non-Jews to live, become citizens in Israel, and um, so they're not, we're not ethnically cleansing. The Palestinians or the Fakistinians envision Shomron and Yehuda, also known as the West Bank, as a place that has to become Judenrein, free of Jews. This is what ethnic cleansing is. The entire Muslim Middle East and pretty much North Africa and Central Asia is now Judenrein, just as Gaza now is. This is what ethnic cleansing is. So in terms of gender apartheid under Islam, don't even get me started. I once lived in Kabul and was in effect held captive very much against my will for very, for five very long months and every day felt like a year. I was married, the marriage was not what I expected and I, I, I wrote about this in An American Bride in Kabul. I could not believe, I, I was in Purda, I was segregated, I couldn't go out without company, without male escorts. And when I saw women in burqas for the first time, sensory deprivation, isolation changes, I couldn't believe my eyes. And surely the West must ban them. And I'm not talking about headgear, just face and body masks. I gave a lecture in 2003 uh, to a feminist group, mainly African-American. They loved what I said, but then somebody was planted and asked me, where do you stand on the issue of the women of Palestine? And so I said, I think you're asking me where I stand on the issue of apartheid, and I oppose it. And Islam is the largest practitioner of gender apartheid in the world. And I began explaining what I meant, which I'll do in a minute. A near riot broke out and I had to be hustled out for my safety. This is 2003 in America. These are not people who care really about women, Muslim women, women of color, or about, quote, Palestine. They care about demonizing Israel. And because they were mainly women of color, they identified with Arabs because they think that all Arabs are people of color. This is not true. That there's no such thing as a Jew of color, and there is. And they have no idea of the anti-black prejudice that characterizes Muslim culture and certainly Arab culture. So I was a witness and a survivor of the kind of gender apartheid that is indigenous to many tribal cultures. Barbaric customs, which include the savage subordination of women, get ready for this, these customs have not been caused by Western imperialism or Western colonialism. This point is very hard for Western thinkers to fathom or non-thinkers. And I'm talking about customs such as forced face veiling, 
purda, segregation, unabased violence, being beaten every day because you're born a girl, child marriage at 10 or 11 or 12, perhaps to a man old enough to be your father or grandfather, arranged marriage, you can't choose your spouse, polygamy, honor killing, which is intimate family femicide, and FGM, female genital mutilation. All of these customs long preceded the rise of the Taliban or Al-Qaeda or Hamas, Boko Haram and ISIS. So this is indigenous to the history of these places and these people. Also, most Western thinkers still don't comprehend that Islam has a long history of slavery, racism, mainly anti-black racism, the religious apartheid that I talked about, colonialism, imperialism, and conversion via the sword. So if you want to blame only the West, you're certainly not looking fully at reality. Now, this understanding should be pretty easy to achieve, given the daily horrendous headlines. But really, nobody wants to be the first to say, the emperor is naked, do they? We live at a moment where Orwell's rules apply. Once the universities in the West manage to indoctrinate, indoctrinate the coming generations, and once people became infected with a fake but lethal narrative, reason can no longer prevail, reason alone. People are punished for thinking independently. They fear that by criticizing barbaric behavior, when it's committed by formerly colonized men of color, especially Arabs, particularly Palestinians, we have the malevolent influence of Ed Said to thank for this, that they themselves will be demonized as racist Islamophobes, a fate worse than death. Unfortunately, the virus of anti-Semitism, and I mean Jew hatred, has been rising among leftists, the so-called good people. And people who were once classical liberals have now become totalitarian leftists. And those who were once in favor of free speech and academic freedom are now vouchsafing these freedoms to hate speech and to junk science. Uh, it's very crazy. It's upside down. So unbelievably, the global professoriate and human rights activist industry, and it's an industry, today they stand with Palestine, a country that's never existed. They stand against anti-colonialism. They stand with Occupy Wall Street and Black Lives Matter. But they're not standing with the Christians, the Yazidis and the Kurds who are being massacred by Muslims right now as we speak. Or they're not standing with the women who are being kidnapped into sex slavery by ISIS, Boko Haram. I have worked with Christians who have been rescuing ISIS's sex slaves. Anti-Christians are not doing this work. Although to be fair, certain Western feminists have been involved in teaching those who counsel them the basics of trauma and recovery, because this is Western knowledge. The tasks before us are clear. Globally, we must militarily, economically, legally, politically, intellectually, ideologically, and socially defeat Islamic Jihad, Islamist Jihad. We must hold American universities accountable for teaching objective truth, not junk social science, not propaganda. We really have to restore stability and intellectual diversity to our campuses and to our media. I've been writing about this from the beginning of the 21st century. You stand up to tell the truth and a mob will shout you down. And then you have to be hustled out as I was for my safety in 2003. We have to deprogram those, and this is a hard task, an important one. People who've been indoctrinated with America hating and Israel hating propaganda. It's like a madness or a virus, a sickness. Thus, my suggestion for the evening is that America should leave the United Nations immediately. This is an international body which has never stopped a single genocide or stopped a single honor killing and has been effective in only one thing, legalizing Jew hatred. If you like this show, please support the Glasgow Gang. 
by going to jamieglazov.com and make sure you are subscribed to its YouTube channel. Thank you.